on today's episode of the glue guys all about damian lillard damian lillard went on a podcast a vlog a show on showtime that i've never heard of and hypothetically talked about joining one of two teams the miami heat or your brooklyn Nets. let's get into it michael let's get into it welcome back to the glue guys it's been a minute Say hello here, Brian. Hello? I tried something different. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, hi. Wait. I, yeah, I tried something new, too. We say, welcome back to the glue, guys. This is Mike here. Say hello. Hello. Brian. Yikes. It's been that, I, I tried to do something unique and different to emphasize the fact that we've been away for a few weeks. Jeez. Um, and I completely flubbed. I just flubbed the line. Um, we are the glue guys at PK Glue Guys on Twitter. Jump in the Discord, discord.gg slash glue guys. Glue guys. Uh, uh, we are a subsidiary of the New York Times company. Right. Miguel Digame. We're back. We're back. You and I. Yes. We're back. Uh, it's been a long time, but like there's news and I just don't want to like, cause like, here's the thing. We could do a whole like, Hey, how you doing? Where you been? What, what I'm told if, doing? if, if I am taking the iTunes reviews at face value, nobody GAF about our personal lives, Mike. And they just want to hear hardcore <laughs> Nets news <laughs> and that's all. Let's fire hose this Nets news right down their gullets. Yeah. The, their Nets gullets. Uh, Damian Lillard. Uh, one of the great clutch players, even though the Portland Trailblazers really haven't gone all that far in the playoffs under his reign. But Damian Lillard, one of the great scoring guards in recent NBA history, uh, a name who's been floated out on the trade market for years now. Um, it feels like things are getting more intense and things have escalated over the past 24 hours regarding Damian Lillard's availability on the trade market. Last night on a show called... Something, I don't know, it's some some guy, Brian Custer of Showtime Basketball. Uh, I think Brian used to be on ESPN. Uh, Dame Lillard was the guest of the show. And Brian, the host, uh, dutifully asked a question in a very good way, asked a hypothetical to Dame. He said, you know, you hear of all these teams that want you, Miami, Boston, Philly, Brooklyn. Hypothetically, who interests you? Mm -hmm. And he says, well, Miami's the obvious one. Bam, Bam out of bio is my dog. Yeah. Bam is my dog for real. But I think Miami is the obvious one. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, your Brooklyn Nets is another obvious one because Mikhail Bridges is my dog too. And both have capable rosters. So Dame Lillard, the real Dame Lillard, I, I swear, when I saw this video pop up on Twitter, I thought I was AI, chat GPT, mid-journey pilled. Yeah. I could not believe that an NBA player of Dame's stature who is in the trade speculation wins as much as he mm. was willing to answer a question, a hypothetical like that of like, if you do get traded, Dame, even though you are a member of the Portland Trailblazers, which team would you like to go to? Yeah. And he, he, as why I love Dame Lillard and why he's the antithesis of Kyrie Irving mm. is that he's just a very honest, down-to-earth dude. And he was like, well, if I was traded, Miami and Brooklyn are the places I want to go. So I called you up immediately when I saw this, and I said, Brian, we've got an emergency pod. Dame Lillard wants to go to Brooklyn. I mean, he literally – I mean, he didn't say I want to go to Brooklyn necessarily, but he – of the two contenders that he could – that if he gets traded, Brooklyn be one of the two teams yeah. that he most wants to go to. And I am aghast and shocked and dumbfounded, and my jaw is on the floor, and yeah. I'm going to roll it up like – a looney tune right well now. that makes one of us mike because as you'll notice if you're on the youtube <laughs> channel that i've had my dame lillard background since the last episode since we last spoke when i was you know hinting lately that i'd been he hearing rumblings you know me mike i'm working my <laughs> working my back channels constantly i tend yes. to know things before they happen it's not something i'm proud of it's just it's just how it is. <laughs> you're not proud of it? Not, not proud of that like superpower. In your life, the fact that you know things ahead yeah, of time? Yes. That's not, yeah, it's of no great interest. But I, you know, because of that superpower, I happen to have this Dame Lillard background. And now it seems pretty, um, I don't know, it's just fortuitous that that's still there. I liked a couple of things to note about that brief little snippet um, from that show. As you say, the lack of caveating about, like, you know, a lot of, star players would be like, you know, love where I'm at, da, 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 and, and probably just deflect entirely. And 
you know, to, to engage so forthrightly does, uh, it's hard not to read into that. And I think that that's, that's worth noting. <laughs> it's not even reading into it. No, it is a, it's, like, it's, it is a direct it's there. It's really written yeah. as plain, plainly it's as not subtext. Day. Um, other thing to note is he seemed way more excited about Miami than Brooklyn, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. There, is, <laughs> there is a uh, palpable excitement for the Miami thing. And then like, uh, and while we're on the subject, Brooklyn would be cool too. I like Mikhail Bridges. Um, so, you know, I am trying not to get ahead of my skis on, on excitement with, you know, where he's so obviously more excited about about Miami, though. I don't know if you've done any kind of trade machining for a Miami sure. trade. Um, sure. Oh, you have. I Good. have. Wow, look at you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think one of the key elements that we're really going to have to dig into here, you know, no trade's going to happen while the NBA Finals is going on, particularly for Miami. It'd be pretty hard. I mean, <laughs> they're not going to engineer a trade at all. They're not wow. going to have trade discussions while they are in the Finals. Yeah. So the Nets have the leg up here. Um, but I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think that... Um, as you go through who could possibly trade for Lillard, you know, there's this idea out there, oh, he has this contract, you know, sort of like the Kevin Durant thing. Well, the Nets could have traded Kevin Durant wherever they wanted to. It just never works out that way. And particularly a franchise who, you know, Lillard has meant so much to Portland. It's hard for me to think that they're just going to throw him to whatever the best offer is. He's going to be, if he truly wants out, and we're going to get into why that it, what other signals via cj mccollum damian lillard's old teammate what he said today is even more fanning the flames mm -hmm. uh he lillard's going to be able to pretty much direct where he wants to go or at least direct between the top two and if brooklyn is in the top two i think the nets have a very compelling package to offer for what the trailblazers will want to be coming out of a lillard trade because the distinction that's going to happen is like, okay, so I'm going to go down to the contenders. So I was going to save this to the end, but, you know, in the flow of conversation, Brian, this let's is keep what it we're flowy. Let's keep it flowy. Brooklyn, let's say Brooklyn and Miami are the top two contenders for Damian Lillard. Why can we say that? Well, Damian Lillard himself said that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, let's just name Philly, Boston, the Lakers, Knicks, Pelicans as the other contending teams for Damian Lillard. I guess you could say the Phoenix Suns, like – you know, there's some machinations where they trade Chris Paul to a third team and Aiton goes to Portland, but they don't have any draft picks. The thing that people need to remember about a Portland trade, if they are trading Damian Lillard, they are into the youth development tank realm. So teams that are into the youth development tank realm, the things they value, short-term contracts that they can trade their long-term contracts to the other team, young players, and draft picks. Miami does not have – Tyler Hero would be the feature player in any deal for Damian Lillard. Beyond that, Gabe Vincent's a free agent. D can the Heat really even trade Caleb Martin right now? Caleb Martin is like – Hard to do. Uh, the, the best contract in basketball at this very non-rookie you know rookie salary. They're not trading Dame – or Bam. They're not trading Jimmy. So the best thing that they have is like Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson – in some collection of picks, mm -hmm. but not as many as your Brooklyn Nets. The Nets, because of the Durant trade, could flood the zone and flip all of those Suns picks mm. and flip that Mavs 2029. And as Nets Daily Net Income reported, a league source told Net Income via Nets Daily, I guess, um, that any trade involving the Nets and Trailblazers would involve Nick Claxton and many, many first-round picks, multiple first-round picks. Mm. Okay, so here's a trade construction, a random one, okay? Damian Lillard and Nurkic, because Nurkic has three years, around $17 million per year on his deal. That's a bad contract. To the Nets, for Spencer Dinwiddie, because he's an expiring contract, Joe Harris, expiring contract, Nick Claxton, and basically every first-round pick. Because if you look at the deal, like Nick Claxton's the best young player in that deal, it's not that enticing because he's an expiring contract, but he is a very, I think he's a valuable young player, a ton of first round picks. And then the trailblazers can go, we're going to flip Dinwiddie and Joe Harris to someone else. You know, there's going to be a third team in there that scoops up Dinwiddie and probably scoops up Joe Harris. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like the Houston Rockets who want to get good and they could say, oh, we're going to scoop up, you know, the Dinwiddie, Joe Harris, get, get older, more veteran. It could be any team. Now, let me ask you, Brian, 
This is Damian Lillard, the guy who's in your background. There's a lot I just kind of spit out there. But the basic construction of a deal would be Nick Claxton in first-round picks for Damian Lillard. Is that enough? Uh, enough for who? For Enough for Portland. Is that yeah, enough I'm, to move And I'm needle? really now like trying not to overvalue our own players a thing. I think we're going to do that. This I think that everyone does when, when these types of conversations happen, um, because I, I'm just like conceiving of a world in which we're, we're kind of building a, a Damian Lillard, Mikhail Bridges led squad. And like sure. the specter of the CJ McCollum, Damian Lillard led squad with no front court. Like that just, that's, it feels eerily similar to me in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, just looking at, Dame's basketball reference last couple years. Great numbers, don't get me wrong. Though that that games played uh, column is beginning to get a little hinky, Mike. That one is getting a little hinky as the years wear on. There's some tankery involved with that. For sure. Um, Of course. But yes, 100%. Yes. And that's not just, I mean, like this last season, statistically, an insane season, his best um, by by some margin. So, you know, all of the, like, he's probably in the heart of his prime, 31, 32, whatever it is. Um, and, and so like, there's that, um, is this the one Mike that we want to, that we want to shoot our, our rounds on? Um, is this the, is this the bullet we want to shoot? The the negative about Lillard is age, the contract you're going to have to pay him and the defense. Like he's a bad, he's, he's a Kyrie level defender, which meaning he's bad. He's a guy that gets pinpointed and picked apart when he's defending. Uh, the massive positive is. He is a uh, known good guy, known clutch guy, uh, a true offensive hub, like one of the few like real dynamite offensive scorers from, you know, who can do everything essentially by himself. Uh, he is dogs with Mikhail Bridges, a fan of dogs. Mikhail is a known lover of dogs. Um, and the final piece is component the chess move in this is that Dame Lillard is one of the most respected players in the NBA. And if you get True. Dame, then the Nets go back into, okay, can we get that? Let's call Mikael Bridges the second star. Can we get a third star? Can we, can you, do you dive back into that market? Now who qualifies as a third star? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> this is so funny. I mean, like, Let's we'll talk about Ben Simmons in a sec in the Instagram photos that he has <laughs> allowed to be shown to the yeah. public. <laughs> Which I said, so I, having seen just to get into it quickly, I did start feeling better about my midsection after seeing a couple of those. I felt like, oh, my abs aren't so far off from where professional athletes <laughs> might. <laughs> wow, wow, good for you. <laughs> no, I, um, I don't. Well, or bad for Ben. It, it was know. great shading. I will say it was tremendous <laughs> shading on the arms. You know, this is poor form. Like, this is lowbrow stuff to be talking about people's bodies. And their shirtless on the comeback trail, yeah. Brian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did. I um, knew it was off season time when I saw the Nick Claxton is shooting threes like clip on somebody's like uh, Twitter thing, and I was like, okay, Oh, I didn't see now, that. Now we're in the off season, yeah. baby. <laughs> that that is like the groundhog yeah. arriving out of its <laughs> right. burrow. It's Nick Claxton shooting threes. Yeah. Um, Dame Lillard is such a magnetic figure so respected in the NBA that if he moves to Brooklyn and Brooklyn being a superstar destination, like the fact that Dame is interested in Brooklyn, even after all the turmoil that had happened with Kyrie and KD, he's interested in it because Mikael Bridges is here, but he, but it's also Brooklyn. I'm sure he has other friends in the NBA and he's maybe not interested in going there. Um, this is like this, the Nets will continue to be a star destination. If they get Dame and they have Bridges, there is some construction where then they can continue, you know, you re-sign um, Cam Johnson at a yeah. certain strong number and you then become, you know, who's the, is there like another third star that just says, Hey, I want to play with Dame and I just got to go there. And I'm going to like, where I'm going to force my way to Brooklyn. Dame yeah. is that kind of guy. I'm thinking about this too, um, with regards to like the value of our maybe first round. James. Oh, wow, yes. okay. The value of our first round picks. Like, <clears throat> I don't know how many of those are going to be lottery picks. Probably not very many. Um, well, well I value them. I value them. Matt Ishbia, the new owner, is running the Suns like fully, right. and so I, I am. And it, there's reports coming out of Phoenix that they're going to trade Aiton and keep Chris Paul, which, on present day value, like I get because Chris Paul is still 
Like he's not obviously he dropped a level or two this year, but he is still a version of Chris Paul that is interesting. But that is bad long term planning to go with the 35 year old point guard versus the 25 year old center or just like, you know, 25 year old interesting player. But yes, Look, I, I value those first round picks greatly. I will say that. You know, so you're, you're betting that in the next however many years that the Suns will actually bottom out. That's your big bet. I, I, I bet pretty strongly because whenever an owner, a new owner comes in, they're dumb. Yeah. Matt Ishbia is, is exhibiting signs of being like, Matt Ishbia may be one of the greatest dumb new owners we've ever seen in basketball. He is mm-hmm. flying in he, within 24 hours of becoming the official owner. He traded for Kevin Durant and pushed all the chips into the table and that he possibly could to do so. He has fired Monty Williams, a highly respected coach who just got the biggest co- coaching contract in NBA history, which indicates, again, that people value Monty Williams. Mm. They are going potentially to decide to stick with Chris Paul as opposed to Aiton. I don't know why you're making that decision anyways, but they are deciding to stick with the old go- guard who has probably one more year left on his career. And No, you think so? Chris, I think Chris Paul has one more year left on his career. You think Unless so? if his contract is two years, then he'll do two years. Like, he'll do as long as that contract. He's old. I don't you know. know. I feel like he's he, like an unfinished business guy, though. Like, he'll just – you'll have to really, like, pry him out of the league. Like Gary Payton <laughs> yeah, totally. on the Lakers? I think he's like – he's going after that Vince Carter, you know, legacy. <laughs> <laughs> Vince Car- the, the end of Vince Carter's run was magic. <laughs> was. Um, but he is let, – let's just say Chris Paul is, is basically done as a impactful – 82 a game a year, two month postseason player. Yeah. Like he's essentially done in that sense. And love our guy, Kevin Durant. The guy gets hurt every year now. Mm-hmm. And even though it's because people run into his legs, he does get hurt every year. And you have Devin Booker, who is fantastic. But Devin Booker has, has still yet to hit that second stage of an NBA, young NBA superstar, which is like, I want to get out of where I am. <laughs> now I know he's a <laughs> the co- divorce a co- stage. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's going to get to divorce stage if, if they don't win a championship next year. So, you know, like the, the groundwork is laid. I know this just became a Phoenix Suns podcast, oddly. No, it's important because we have to know where we value the picks because we have to know what we're trading if we're trading for Dame Lillard. It's all related back to the core conceit of this being a Nets podcast. And I think other teams in the league will value those Suns picks because smart teams in the league will look at what's happening in Phoenix in terms of who got fired that the coaching search, remember how, like, uh, did you keep up with the fact that Bill Simmons declared on his pod that Kevin young, the former, the, the lead assistant with the Suns, would become the head coach. And then 24 hours later, it became Frank Vogel. Mm-hmm. And there's an idea and that Bill Simmons, like, I think kind of talked about this, not that he said Matt Ishbia told him, but everyone believes Matt Ishbia told him, and they changed their decision making because they wanted someone more experienced. Or well, it could be like a disinformation campaign for Matt Ishbia, much like in The Departed, when um, when Frank goes with a different crew just to inform um, Leonardo DiCaprio's character of something that wasn't true, so they would see if it would come back, you know, through the wires if the, if the cops would show up there. Could be like that. And how did it end up for Frank? Yeah, not great, not great. Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> exactly right. So, great point. Maybe, maybe, as you said, Frank Costello is Matt Ishbia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Bill Simmons is Leo DiCaprio. Yeah. Killer comparisons, departed characters to NBA Ooh, figures. Let's go. Um, Alec okay. Baldwin. I don't know. Alec Baldwin's character. So he's like this like lieutenant. Tom Thibodeau? I don't know. I'm trying to think. <laughs> Tibbs. That's yeah. very good. And and Matt Damon is, um, you know, uh, some treacherous, um, but like doesn't seem treacherous necessarily. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> with his, with his, which everyone made such and, a big deal on Snapchat. Anyways, that's not, we're getting off. To that yeah. Page. That uh, o- overrated internet things. That's yeah. in the top 20, yeah. I think. Um, so I think I, again, I, I know this again, I think those sun's picks are very valuable. I think they're more valuable than like the idea of, the Bucks picks, like the Pelicans own the Bucks picks. But even those are becoming valuable because there's all that smoke coming out of Milwaukee that like maybe like the owner left. Anyways, we don't need to get into all this. But okay, this so quick, here's my yeah. question for you, just really quick before we go to break. Yeah. Um can we say that these are valuable enough that it 
it makes sense that we keep Nick Claxton. Is there any version of this where we can be like, like that's a Cam Thomas job, not a Nick Claxton job? Um, <laughs> not Cam even... Thomas being the centerpiece of a deal. <laughs> I'm just saying, like the picks are so are like Get out of here. The picks are gonna. I mean, I'm, I'm being hyperbolic, but like, how do we keep Nick Claxton in this? Because what I don't want to do is is recreate a situation where the front court is incredibly. Light. I get. I take your point that Damian Lillard know, can I attract know. a good front court players ostensibly, but like. Claxton just, would be incre- would would legitimately be incredible uh, with like Lillard, you know, because yeah. you need he's a switching big, it's, and you it's, need it's, a switching it's, big it's with Lillard. It'd be a very good fit, yeah. Anyways. A rim protecting switching big, and that's exactly what Nick Claxton is. Nick Claxton's in the deal because Bridges can't be, you know, the whole reason why Lillard would come here would be for Bridges and the Nets. You know, Alex Schiffer of the Athletic, Brooklyn Nets reporter, has stated that the Nets have no interest in trading Bridges. Which, particularly the smoke coming out of Portland, like if you want Lillard and you're the Nets, you don't even talk to them about Bridges. Like it, I, I know, like I had put out on Twitter, as many Nets podcasts did, when the Trailblazers got the third overall pick, you're like, Scoot Henderson for Bridges, would you do it? And on its face, that interests me a lot. But I also, you know, that that's like, okay, then the Nets really stink and you know all their picks are in houston so any deal that the nets make that involves them getting bad would have to involve houston because they need their picks back anyways listen quick quick break coming back i got there's a few more thoughts that we just really need to get out there rip it and we're back brian um here's the cj mccollum thing we haven't even brought up the quotes yet this Mm -hmm. so lillard went on that showtime show with brian custer and said the thing that he said CJ McCollum on first take today, we're recording this on Wednesday. Uh, they were reacting to the Lillard quotes. CJ McCollum, of course, played with Lillard for many years in Portland. He has this, he plays for the Pelicans now, but he has like this deal with ESPN where he does TV sometimes for them. Yeah. He said, Dame is not telling him these things, the thoughts that are about to spill out of his mouth. But he says, the Trailblazers are at a crossroads as a franchise. The market, meaning the trade market, will dictate what's happening here. He says Lillard will not ask out, which most people believe that Lillard won't. He'll kind of just have a soft ask out. Uh, uh, what it's silent quitting? Is that what quiet the, quitting? Yeah, quiet quitting. Um, and th- this is the the ma- major quote here. Um, if the Trailblazers don't have a puncher's chance of competing for a championship via whatever happens with that third overall pick, meaning do they? Basically, C.J. McCollum is saying the Trailblazers need to trade that third overall pick for someone really good. He says, if I was a betting man, this is the last we've seen of Lillard in Portland. Mm. C.J. McCollum, a the known Robin gambler. to Lillard's Batman, yeah. <laughs> a known gambler. Uh, he was, he is, he went to Lehigh, and there are casinos in the Lehigh Valley. I'm not, you think I'm kidding. <laughs> the guy's a degenerate gambler. <laughs> I don't know that. That's, uh, a, that's yeah, a lot. That's a serious accusation. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm just truly a joke. Um, if he, CJ McCollum, again, talking on ESPN, maybe, you know, you're, you kind of get lulled into Stephen A. Smith and you get lulled into the hot takery, but he says, if I was a betting man, this is the last we've seen of Lillard in Portland. The other thing about CJ McCollum, he was a journalism major mm. at Lehigh. Mm. You know, so, so he has ethics. Cracks. Yeah. And right. I think he's the NBPA, the Players Association president. So he, you oh, know, yeah. he's he knows the league. Mm-hmm. He knows the league probably better than most players. Um, I mean, that is significant. Yeah, that he is a betting man. So it leads back to, you know, you asked me this: Do you want to do this? Kind of like, would you want to do this? Do Do you feel like it's the right? Let's just say the team that is left over, yeah, is Lillard. Because I I don't know the particulars of Cam Johnson. You know, like, like again, I think if Portland makes the trade, they basically are going to just continue to bottom out and take draft picks to young players. And Cam Johnson's, like, not a part of that plan, right? right. Like, he, I don't think I Cam Johnson appeals to him. I don't – I mean, I guess Nick Claxton would, is still in that sort of very much growth phase where it could be part of the part of the future. But he, you got to pay him pretty soon here. And um, I'm just trying – again, I'm trying to wrestle back with Nick Claxton. It's not going to happen. I get it. I get it. Um, I mean, there, there there's some element of like the Nets of like if you're Portland, you take Claxton, Dinwiddie, and Joe Harris just because those are also the salaries that work out. Here are the people I'm not talking about: Ben Simmons. Like Ben Simmons is not going to be in Dam- Damian Lillard trade, right? Right. Like, regardless of those Instagram photos, he's not going to be in a Dame trade. Um, 
Dinwiddie would have some value in the league to be traded. Claxton has, I think, significant-ish value. Like, meaning you could deal Claxton to another team to get two more first-round picks from them into the future. And Joe doesn't really have any value. I think he has negative value, but he's still an expiring contract. And in my trade construction, the Nets are taking about Nurkic because the Nets, you know, they, they you kind of have to just, like, take in a bad contract with Lillard. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to do that? Do you want your team to be left over? Dame Lillard, Bridges, Cam Johnson, Nurkic, and then just, like, you know, there would be is Dorian, Dorian Finney-Smith, you know, Royce O'Neal. There's all those, like, bit players um, who are interesting. Those are wing defenders. You know, the, the, the thing about Portland for years is that they have not had good 3 and D guys around Dame. And the Nets could try out a lineup of Dame, Royce, Dorian Finney-Smith, Mikael Bridges, and then Yusuf Nurkic, who doesn't play basketball. Yeah. I'm trying, um, to, I'm trying to think about, like, this the piecemeal – strategy of like piecing together yet another like superstar team even though like i think the mikhail bridges part of it does does prevent it from being conceived as a you know even aspirationally superstar team because i I don't know maybe mikhail is seen that way or maybe he's not i can't tell but um i don't know is it is the kind of thing where it's like I, i feel like when these teams are constructed it's like in one summer we got Paul Pierce and, you know, Ray Allen and, and Kevin Garnett. And in one fell swoop, we got LeBron and Chris Bosh to come to. It's like, there's not a, I'm trying to think of, well, actually the most recent instance of this happening was our Brooklyn Nets where James Harden joined, joined <laughs> the crew sometime after. And it didn't work out that great. I'm just thinking of like how like Damian Lillard kind of hits the ground running on a team like this and is in put him, putting himself in a better position than he is currently. Um, you know, I don't. Yeah. I don't know that that team, as the one that you just laid out, as constructed, is super duper competitive. Um, I think it's a a notch above what we're currently putting out, but it also complicates things. You know, in that same the superstar dynamic complication stuff that we've just got ourselves ridden of. And I know that like Damian Lillard is particularly a diplomatic version of that, but even still, here here Portland is in a in a situation in which you know the just under under the the subtext, as we've said, is is I, we're, I'm, this is headed for a divorce, um, and that's going to be the true of like the like professional basketball, p- professional sports generally. Think uh, speaking, things fall apart. Um, but like I don't know, I'm just trying to think of like does that like how long before we actually like compose a more, uh, you know, a, a more coherent roster around that so that it makes sense, um, and then also to the other side of that we're talking about sun's picks that are years in the future. Like we don't want to wait that long to be a rebuilding team. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I can't really decide Mike. I'm having a hard time. I'm indecisive. Who would have guessed? Yeah. I mean, I think that there's one name to kind of throw out. There's like a guy again, I'm not, I can't figure out the salary component. Cause I don't know how, cause when you trade camp Johnson as a restrictor free agent through a sign and trade, there's some level of like, I think, your salary cap gets capped now, but if you're trading him to Portland, um, that's no big deal. Uh, I, a name I'd be interested in if they got Dame interested in the sense of like, I think there's smoke behind the fire would be Draymond green. Okay. And we've joked about what a Draymond Ben Simmons team would look like. It would be (laughs) the the biggest disaster. So much post-passing. It'd be really (laughs) incredible. It would be when, Anne Hathaway and James Franco hosted the Oscars. It yeah. would be one person trying very, very <laughs> just, hard. At the just other the high post to low no post interest. back and forth. <laughs> just, that, that would be dynamic. Um, but it, it's like he is. Uh, so like this is a bad free agent class, right? This this year coming up, Chris Middleton is a free agent, but he was in on the like Bucks head coaching meetings. So there's an idea that like if you're picking the next head coach, you're also not going to leave like there's probably some handshake agreement that you already have a contract in place and probably a max contract so if you're the nets it's like draymond is the cheap quote-unquote superstar that it if you are constructing a big and draymond is technically a big that's next to lillard draymond can't shoot we all know that but like he is so smart so crafty such a good defender that still that like and, you know, this is like a stretch, but Draymond plays, used to play in Oakland. Dave's from Oakland. 
Uh, <laughs> there's like I love I love these the the geographic connections that you that you yeah. hammer in there. And, and so, anyways, I just think. Yeah, I think if the Nets make this deal, they need to also be aware of like what's the next move because I still like a let's just imagine a world where it's uh, Bridges, DFS, you know, Royce O'Neal and Lillard. That's like your core ish starters. That's not it's just not it. You know, it's just not it. But it's but Damian Lillard is so good. He's like on, he, it's like, on the way to being that. it. And I think you raise a really good point of like he is serves as a a nexus of attention for other good players. Um, that that all makes sense to me. I I mean, because there are going to be guys like, you know, someone got in our DMs in a in a good way, um, <laughs> and and mentioned this to me, it's in that in a good way. you know, like the Wizards hired Michael Winger, uh, the the Clippers' former number two, to now run the franchise, and they just hired a guy from the Oklahoma City Thunder to be the new like GM of the Wizards, and. So they have Brad Beal. Now we could talk about would you have Brad Beal or Damian Lillard? I don't like I don't I don't even really want to get into that. But if let's say the Wizards decide we're gonna tank. Okay, so then Beal's on the market and the free agents are Chris Stapps and Kuzma. Well, like, you know, you get into like, okay, what do you what do you want to do if you're the Nets? Like, do you actually do you want to go for that big flashy name, Damian Lillard, who has a massive contract, who's gonna get paid fifty eight point five million dollars? In 2025, My God. and he's going to be old, or are you like, well, there's some mid-tier strategy here where we stay very interesting, and you grab, you know, you flip, you let Cam Johnson go, you maybe trade a first-round pick to get cap space because you get rid of Joe Harris, and then you sign Kuzma. I'm just saying a name, right? You sign Chris Stapps as your new center, and you could trade Nick Lax. Like, there's things that the Nets could be doing that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to do far, this. You're talking yourself into this. I can feel it. I'm just let's just be honest. The 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 biggest ceiling raiser, by the way, Dame's player option for 2026 is sixty three million dollars. Sheesh. And he de- he deserves every penny. No, but <laughs> um like Lillard is by far the thing that would raise the ceiling, and it would be the thing by far that would encourage anyone else, any other star in the NBA to join the Nets. I still like my secret strategy, which is sign Russ to a cheap deal and roll out Russell Westbrook as like your creator hub intensity bro mm. for cheap amount of money for like like what contract is Russ Russell Westbrook going to get next year and then just like prop up the franchise with that or go at like we need to do a truth we need to do a, a power rankings of potential because like there's like Zach Levine could be available DeMar DeRozan could be available like there's all these names that yeah. are somewhat interesting are not nearly as interesting as Dame, but the the chances of getting them are like it's just lower, it's just less. I'll, I'll do the, the transparently um, podcast centric version of, of what I think should happen. If if I'm speaking as just a podcaster, they should do this trade um, because you know as fun as it as as it is to watch you know <laughs> this the good vibes team. Um, we're right now we're not on our like final like on our track to build towards the thing yet until some kind of transaction happens one way or another um so i i do believe that like a transaction is imminent like i don't think that management and ownership wants to wait for like the picks to manifest into something like i just don't think that's i don't think we need to necessarily and um so like in general i think transaction i'm transaction pilled as they say on the internet sure um whether this is the one or not don't know. Would love to keep Nick Claxton, but I think in general, we're we're the smoke where there's smoke, there's fire. Kind of thinking about this is is probably pretty true. Just to say what what Dame's season was this past season, he played in 58 games. I think there was some tankery there going tankery. on by the end, yeah. but he averaged 32 points per game, uh, seven assists per game. His two point field goal percentage was the best of his career, mm-hmm. which is usually like. If it's bad, it's when shit gets scary. Um, and his three-point percent, he took 11 threes per game and still shot 37%, which is like, just again, all those threes are like pull-up threes. Yeah, 37% is pretty fantastic. Like, he is an all-time fire scorer bro. There is no question. Mm-hmm. And it, But it's like, he's going to be 33 when the season starts. He ain't getting any younger as you could say about anyone on this planet Earth. Yeah. Um, except Benjamin and, Button. Like, except for Benjamin yeah, Button. Yeah, you're right. Yep. BB. 
Um, so take that. BB Netanyahu. Um, <laughs> nice. Shout out. <laughs> thank you. Uh, not. I don't want to talk. I can't yeah. talk about that. Um, but the he is, you know, again, who knows about health? He's aging. He's smaller, but he is the he is a big gun. Yeah. And if you get him, it slots Mikhail Bridges in as like a really proper number two option. And then everything else, everyone else bumps down. Mm. And there are like a, a plethora of three and D wings around Lillard and their holes. Like you would not want a second, a real second creator, not really counting Mikhail as like a creator. Mm-hmm. He's a scorer, but you want a real second creator. Maybe it didn't when he stays. I don't know. Um, and you want a Nick Claxton center, but you'd be trading Nick Claxton. So, yeah. Well, you did your time, Mike, and you got to go. So I got to go. Tell the Thank people you all for listening. Yeah. Check us out on Twitter at BK Glue Guys, netsdaily.com, and The Athletic. Get yourself behind the paywall at theathletic.com slash glue guys, a subsidiary of the New York Times. Co. Bye, everybody. Thank you.